Hello, my name is Callan Alexander. I work for BirdLife Australia and I'm also doing a master's for QT on powerful out acoustic monitoring. Um, today I'm just going to chat to you a little bit about what we're doing and how we're doing it. Um, and basically the gist of it is we're planning on using acoustic monitors to monitor and track powerful out populations. First things first, um, we're going to have a look at what powerful owl vocalizations are. So a vocalization is um, a noise made by an organism, in this case, a bird. Not all noises made by birds are necessarily calls. Um, you can have calls and songs and contact calls. Um, so the word vocalization is just a word that sort of encompasses all of those. Um, so uh, sometimes, typically, uh, people will just refer to noises that birds make as calls. And that's fine, I'll do that as well, but um, the correct term is a vocalization. So you would have heard some powerful owl vocalizations in the earlier workshops. The male is much deeper, the females are a higher pitch, and then the fledglings actually sound completely different. Uh, they're very noisy, they're whiny, they're a bit more screechy, they're sort of a high-pitched trilling sound rather than the typical more owl-like vocalizations made by the adults. What I'm going to play for you now is a call that I heard the other night, and it's one that I hadn't actually heard before. You might have to turn your volume up a little bit to hear it. There's some frogs going off in the background, but that call in the forefront is actually a female powerful owl. So I think that there's quite a few noises made by powerful owls that we probably haven't quite, um, that we haven't heard yet or that we don't understand. So they actually have quite a large repertoire of noises that we, and we don't really know what a lot of these noises mean. There's very little study on powerful owl vocalizations. It's mostly anecdotal evidence. Um, there's not actually many peer reviewed papers on the way that they vocalize or why they vocalize and how. Powerful owls are an ideal candidate for acoustic monitoring because they're very loud. They make a very loud noise in the forest and they call at night when not a lot else is calling. The way that they call is very interesting to us because it helps us track their movements. Um, they're most vocal during breeding season, which begins in late April. So what is acoustic monitoring? The field that I'm studying in is called ecoacoustics or acoustic ecology and it's the study of the relationship between living things and their environment through sound. Usually what that involves is analyzing what we call a long duration recording. So what we do is we put something called an acoustic monitor or an acoustic recorder out into the field and it's a fancy device that can record for a very long period of time and then we will go collect the recorder, get the recordings and then we will analyze them. So that can involve a number of things, um, manual listening or using computer programs. Um, but basically what we're doing is we're analyzing sound. And the reason that we do that is sound can tell us a lot about an ecosystem. Vocal species are often good indicators of ecosystem health. In Australia in particular, the noises of species can tell us a lot about what's going on. If you hear lots of noisy miners, that can indicate sort of uh, not the best habitat in some cases, often very urbanized. Um, usually means there's been some sort of damage. Uh, insects, if you hear lots of insects, that tells you that insect breeding is good. If you don't hear so many insects, maybe not so many insects around, which could mean less of other species. Bats are interesting because they're pollinators. You can hear rainfall correlations if you hear lots of frogs. Um, you'll probably only hear them when it's been raining. Cane toads are things that we can hear, and that tells us a lot about what's going on. Um, so there's a lot you can tell about an ecosystem through the sound that you hear. Why do we use acoustic monitoring for powerful owls? So powerful owls are a very cryptic species. So they have very, very low detection rates when you're just going out for a walk. Uh, they can inhabit huge home ranges in some cases, so you might just not be walking in the same time and same place that where the owls are. So it can be very difficult to survey them on foot. 
owls are often an indicator or umbrella species. So if you have an owl, they're an apex predator. So it sort of tells you that there's lots of prey around. Powerful owls in particular, they rely on hollows. Um, so if there's a powerful owl in an area, it means that there's old trees where there are hollows and it means there's lots of possums usually. Acoustic monitoring is also good because it's completely non-invasive. We don't have to disturb the owl at all. And even just going for a walk um, consistently through a habitat, um, that's slightly invasive. So putting a monitor in is completely non-invasive. It's also a useful tool in remote areas that are difficult to survey. So if it's an area that's hard to survey on foot, you can just go out there once, put a monitor, leave it for a few months, and then come back. Acoustic monitoring is also a good tool to access private land. Some people don't really like us walking around in their property, but they might be okay with us just leaving an acoustic monitor on their property. So it's a good tool to access private land holders. So one of the biggest problems associated with acoustic monitoring um, is just the sheer amount of data. So let's say you have 50 acoustic monitors and you leave them out for a few months at a time and then you bring them back, then it's pretty much impossible um, for someone to actually go and listen to all of that data. It's not really feasible. So what we need is we need a means of processing that data without having to physically sit for a year straight and listen. So that's where something called an acoustic recognizer comes into play. Yes, it's a piece of software um, that is able to sort of process the data and hopefully, if it works, pick up um, particular bird calls within that data. And the platform that we use to do that at QT is the EcoSounds website. Um, and you can actually go on there and you can tag calls if you know about bird calls. And also there's some really good citizen science projects. Um, I've included the link there where you can go and help out with identifying owls and bushstone curlews. So I just want to quickly go over false color spectrograms. So um, false color spectrograms are something that's developed by Michael Towsey. Um, and what it does is it gives us a way to visualize these extremely long duration recordings. So like I said before, when you're dealing with loads of data, you need a way to be able to get through it quickly. False color spectrograms sort of give you a very quick visual look at what's going on in the data. Um, and they do that by combining acoustic indices. So acoustic index indices are basically their way of mathematically um, looking at your data and they can tell us certain things like if it's windy or rainy or how much activity there is. False color spectrograms, they're just a visual example of that. Um, so you can sort of see what's going on in certain frequencies. You can see insects, um, you can see when there's road noise, you can see when there's wind. So they're very useful tools for just being able to quickly look at say a 24 hour period and see how much activity there is in certain bandwidths. Um, and you can download software for free to look at your own recordings if you would like. I've included the link there. So the research questions for this project, what do we actually want to know? Um, we want to know if we can uh, use automated species recognition to determine breeding success of the Pafala. So because the adults and the juveniles have different calls, we want to see if we can actually detect if they're breeding just by listening to um, our recordings. Um, and we like to use acoustic recognizers to do that so we don't have to sit through those hundreds of hours of recordings. We also want to know how effective it is. So we want to know is, is it worth spending time on acoustic monitoring um, compared to our traditional surveys, so spotlighting. So we'll come sort of look at the two and see which is more effective. We'd also just like to know a little bit more about powerful our calls, how far they travel, how we should place our acoustic recognizers. If we can find new calls that tell us exactly when they're breeding, that would also be really useful. And we're hoping that those false color spectrograms will be a good way to just quickly have a look at our data and hopefully tell us if there are powerful hours there or not. So our methods, we're going to place the recorders and we're going to monitor the areas that we are placing them. We're going to develop some false color spectrograms. Then I am going to have to manually go through a lot of the recordings and find owls myself just because the recognizers usually need some sort of training. So you have to find real calls and then train the recognizer 
on those real calls. So I am going to have to listen to lots of our calls. We're going to try build a recognizer then. Uh, and we'll probably also go out into the field and record some owls up close just and try and get a good idea of when they're calling, how they're calling. Then we test, we see how well our recognizer is working. And then eventually we will spread out monitors all across Southeast Queensland um, and monitor areas where we don't know if there's owls. So for now, we're just going to monitor areas where there are owls um, and see how well our monitoring works. But eventually we'd like to put these monitors out in areas where we don't know and hopefully use the monitors to tell us if there are owls there or not. So there are a few challenges associated with this project. The first of which is that powerful owls have extremely highly variable territory sizes. They can exist in really small areas or really big areas. Um, and some of them move around a lot and some of them don't move around much at all. So that makes placing our monitors a little bit tricky. We need to figure out where to put them. And that's quite difficult when their ranges are quite variable. Um, they also tend to change their nesting and roosting trees. You can go to an owl and it'd be, be roosting somewhere one day. And you can go back to the same spot the next day and it won't be there. Um, so that makes putting a recorder tricky. And with their nesting hollows, they don't use the same one every year. They tend to switch it up a little bit. Uh, wind and road noise are a big problem for acoustic monitoring. Um, you can combat wind noise by using those false color spectrograms that I spoke about earlier and just focusing on days where it's not windy. Um, with road noise, that's a bit more of a problem, particularly because powerful owls, the males especially call in low frequencies. Um, and we suspect that road noise might be a bit of a barrier and interfere with the male calls. So we'll have to see how effective um, the monitoring will be in uh, urban areas. We're not sure yet. As I said, figuring out where to put the recorders is tricky. Also, we don't know how well the recognizer is going to work. If we can get a high success rate, that's great. But if we can build a recognizer that only detects owls 30% of the time, maybe uh, that's not so great. We're not quite sure how well the acoustic monitors that we've um, that we're going to be using for this project are going to work yet. Uh, we'll sort of have to figure out what their limitations are. Finally, how can you help? Um, the best way that you can help with the acoustic monitoring side um, is to keep telling us when you're seeing owls, particularly if you can email me if you find owls that are being very vocal. That's really useful. Furthermore, you can help by if you hear an owl making a strange call that you haven't heard before, and you know that it's definitely a powerful owl making that noise. So if you're in the field, come across a powerful owl and they're making a weird noise. If you could whip out your phone and take a recording of it and send it to my email, that would be very useful too. Um, and finally, eventually we'll also be getting volunteers to help us placing the monitors and collecting them. So you can help out in that way too. That's all from me. Thank you very much.